During the summer, my meal plan changes. The focus is on light and quick meals that require minimal heat, are packed full of flavor, and are budget friendly. The way we accomplish that is through the use of leftovers and seasonal produce. Today I'm bringing you along for three of our family favorites featuring chicken. Oven roasted crispy chicken thighs are a huge hit around here. I serve them with the skin on and with sides like roasted potatoes, onions, and cabbage, always making sure to have enough to eat them a second time. But what I've found is that they're unlikely to be eaten in the same way when they're reheated. The skin just does not crisp up in the same way as when it comes out of the oven that very first time. In order to get them down and to make the most of cooking one time during the summer instead of multiple, what I've found is that I need to remake this chicken in ways that my whole family will love. Today, I wanna to share with you three of those recipes, including a chicken salad that's great on a sandwich or with crackers, a chicken Caesar wrap, and a chicken salad that is our all-time favorite summer salad, which includes a few surprising ingredients. But to get started, I am prepping up all of the chicken that was left. You saw me accomplish that already. I cut it all off of the bone and then just did a small dice on it. And now I'm prepping up the lettuce. I got a whole head, chopped up the whole thing because with the menu that we have coming up, it is just best to do it once, get it all washed and back in the fridge. So the first thing that I did was get it cut up really nice and small because that's how my kiddos like it. I added a few drops of lemon essential oil to the water that you're seeing here, and I went ahead and put it inside my salad spinner basket. I know you can fill the whole sink full of water and let it soak, but I find that just swishing it around really good and getting it all down in there works really, really well. And once that's accomplished, because it's already in the basket, you can just strain out the bulk of the water. Now notice how gross that water looks after washing your lettuce. If you are not washing your lettuce, you definitely want to do so because it is a little bit gross once you see exactly what all comes off of it. So once the drain is complete, the lid goes on and then you just have to pull it a few times to get the bulk of the water out. If you are new to my kitchen, this is a really good time to introduce myself. My name is Jill. I'm a mom of five. We have a busy house full of seven in all. And anytime there's something going on in my kitchen that is loud or messy or fun, there are always at least two and sometimes up to 10 extra hands involved in what we have going on. The salad spinner is definitely one of those jobs that brings in the kiddos. So as you can see here, this salad spinner is so easy, even my little two-year-old can work it quite effectively and she gets a real kick out of helping. So even though it takes a few extra minutes when, when she's involved, I still love to have her around and it is always enjoyable to help train her up so that down the road she can wash this lettuce for me and handle it. I also find that the kids are way more likely to eat anything that they are involved in the creation of. So that's just one more advantage to getting them set up to be great eaters and have a healthy diet down the road. The first meal that I'm actually creating today is the chicken Caesar salad wrap. My kiddos love salad and my husband likes to get wraps when we go out to eat. But it took me a while to figure out that this is so simple and really easy to do at home. I threw in some of that chicken that you saw me prep with the lettuce, a little Caesar dressing, which you can make on your own, or even Olive Garden sells one in the store, just depending on your preference with ingredients. And then I threw in some croutons, and that's it. So as you can see, if your ingredients are already prepped, this one throws together very, very fast. Once the ingredients are tossed together, I put it back in the refrigerator because I really like the cold crispness that comes along with a really, really cold inside. I also do throw some Parmesan cheese in there from time to time, just depending on what I have available, but anything extra can be just as needed and isn't really necessary to make a really delicious fresh meal. While that's chilling in the refrigerator, I'm turning my attention to a quick cucumber salad that I will have to go with a meal that I'm prepping for tomorrow. Our cucumber plants are in high production right now. I have a couple different kinds growing out on the vine and I love the variation that it gives a little bit in texture and flavor. They're both pickling cucumbers, but also good for slicing. So it gives us the flexibility to do whatever's gonna work best for our family. 
The kiddos really love fresh cucumbers. We eat around 10 of these little guys a day right now. But in addition to that, our production is high enough that I can put together a quick refrigerator pickle that makes a great side dish for any meal that we have going on. Our onions are also finishing up for the season, so I have a lot of really great fresh onions straight out of the garden, and I'm just going to do a really thin slice on those as well, pack them right in on top of the cucumbers, and press them down gently, and then add another layer of the cucumbers on top. Of course, if you want to do this in a large bowl, you can evenly mix it, but I know how my kiddos are going to go with this. If they're just going to pull out what they want. So it really doesn't make a big difference how high or low anything's packed. Once you give it a good press with the fermentation plunger, everything will nicely pack down inside. While I finish up on this recipe, I do want to take just a minute to talk to those of you out there who have said you would love to start a garden, but have just never taken up the time to do it, or not sure where to start, or that you have a black thumb. I was all of those things three years ago. I'm three years into gardening right now. I have made some mistakes, but the amount of just wonderful food that has come straight out of our garden has been amazing. Even if you have a black thumb or you've killed every plant you've ever grown, you can still garden. It just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of online research, and some commitment to make sure you're watering and pulling a few weeds here or there. And you can really come up with some amazing things straight out of your backyard. There was a time when the only gardening that I wanted to try was a salsa garden on my front porch step. And yeah, everything died there too. But once I put the effort in to put in a garden in our backyard and had a desire to grow our own food, all of that changed. So I just want to encourage you that even if you just have flower pots or you don't have a backyard garden space, there are things that you can do to still garden. Container gardening can produce some amazing food, right? Even on a balcony, if you look into something like a green stock planter or even just some grow bags. So I just want to encourage you to give it a try. Give yourself some time and see what you can do. With the pickles back into the refrigerator so they can set and brine for 24 hours, I'm turning my attention back to the chicken Caesar wraps I just have a few large tortillas that I'm warming up here on my griddle. You do not have to warm them up, of course. If you just want to keep your kitchen completely cool and don't want to take the time to warm these up, you can totally do that. It really is just up to you. I find that they're a little bit more pliable once they've been tossed and like the texture that comes along with that, but again, completely an option. So with them complete, all you have to do is put the filling for the wrap right in the middle, give it a roll, and you are good to go. I did take some of our freshly sliced cucumbers, get them sliced up as well, so there was a side to go along with it, and then I like to cut the wrap down the middle just for ease of use for the little hands that are going to be eating it, but again, totally an option. Do what works for you, but this is a quick, light, and delicious meal that will have you full, keep your kitchen cool, and everyone happy at the same time. Now the next meal that we're jumping into is a chicken salad that is great for putting on a sandwich or even eating with crackers. This will again be served along with those refrigerator pickles or I also have some fresh cucumbers and some carrots that I'll put on the plates to go with these as well. The kids really love this as a vegetable side, but here I'm using the leftover chicken from yesterday, which is diced up, in addition to some canned chicken, which was thighs that I canned up a few months back. I do have a video on that. I'll make sure to put it in the cards or in the links so you can check out how easy it is to actually can your own chicken, but I find it really, really amazing and super easy when you want a quick, light meal to go to have a protein already prepped and ready to go on the shelf. I also reserve the liquid that came out of the jar of chicken because that is delicious chicken broth and I will save that in the refrigerator and put it to the side, cook some rice in it or even make just a really delicious gravy with that as the base down the road for another meal that we have coming up. As for this chicken salad, I find that having the chopped up thighs as well as the canned chicken provides a nice balance in the texture. You have the chunks from the roasted chicken and then the little bit softer, more flaky texture that comes from the canned, and it makes a really nice chicken salad. 
So into the chicken, I'm stirring in some homemade mayo, which we really love and it's been great to make our own, keeping it all fresh and using up the eggs that we have coming in from our chickens right now. And then I added some Dijon mustard, some salt, pepper, lemon essential oil. I really love that instead of keeping fresh lemons on hand. I used some onions that I had chopped up and froze because those are already quick, chopped, and ready to go. You could use some green onions if you have those available. You can also add celery. I did not put any in here simply because I didn't have any in my kitchen and I was using what's available. But if you do have celery, that's a great addition as well. It makes a really nice crunch. At my house, we do not like grapes in the chicken salad, but that is totally optional. Again, you can make any of this work for your family. Over on the grill, I warmed up the buns. I did so by toasting them after adding mayo to the underneath side. I find that mayo works way better for browning bread than butter ever does. It gives it a lot crispier texture, and it's just nice to be able to use up the mayo that we had already made to get the buns done. Now, as you can see here, I'm setting down some plates. I had a couple kids that wanted a bowl of the chicken salad to eat with crackers. They're getting the cucumber salad as well as some fresh carrots, just depending on the kid. Everyone's different. And then I called everybody in to help us get cups ready to go and to get everybody up to the table. Now, this is the time when I typically take that really good up close picture so you can see exactly what the food looks like. And somehow when I went back to edit, I realized that I did not get the camera actually turned on. So there is no beautiful shot of this chicken salad sandwich for you, but I can assure you it was absolutely delicious. If you do not have canned chicken at home, I would highly encourage it. Even if you're not canning it at home yourself, you can buy pre-canned chicken and it makes an awesome meal prep, especially for summer months when you're not wanting to heat up the kitchen. Today, I'm going to use another jar of the same chicken. You see me pouring the broth into that same jar that I did yesterday in order to make our next and all-time favorite meal, which is our chicken bacon salad. This is a recipe that first came into our home back when I was just learning how to eat clean and use a lot of whole food ingredients. We ordered the Blue Apron subscription box for several months after we moved back from a larger area into this really small community where we live now because we knew we wouldn't have the same restaurants available that we had back there. We took our eating out budget and rolled it into the Blue Apron boxes. And I can tell you that during that time, we garnered and gathered many amazing recipes that we still eat today, even though we're not actually getting those meal delivery boxes anymore at all. This is one of those recipes. They had you take an actual chicken breast and grill it up at the time. And I realized I can short circuit that by using canned or leftover chicken, which is what I would have done if I still had the chicken left from earlier in the week that we've already used. But it really is just a really fresh, delicious salad. And I will make sure to put their actual link in the comments. It's different than what I'm going to be making for you today, but only slightly just based on the ingredients we have available. Now, you just saw me go out to the garden. We have a garden that is absolutely thriving right now. And I'm grabbing some onion tops, cutting them up with my little scissors. They're actually salad tong scissors. And so they pre-chop things as you go, just so I have the green onions ready to go. Other ingredients in the salad, which are my kiddos' favorite, is going to be apples. Now, as you can see here, I'm grabbing three. I never know how many times kids are going to come in and steal from me off the cutting board. So I grab three just in case I need them all. But what I'm going to do here is just finely chop these into a nice little dice, set them aside, and get them ready to go on top of the salad as an additional topping. Meanwhile, I have the chicken that I had drained earlier over on the stove, and I'm frying it up in a little bit of bacon grease. Using the bacon grease to fry off the chicken was actually the original idea from the Blue Apron recipe, and at the time, I thought it made the chicken so, so flavorful. So I kept that when I moved on to using canned chicken or leftover chicken that was already cooked at home. Even if I'm using a pre-cooked chicken, I still throw it in some bacon grease to not only impart the flavor, but to crisp up the chicken. 
I really like the difference in texture that that brings along when you add the cold apples, the hot chicken, plus the different textures that come along with that. It just is a really nice combination for the salad itself. Now, once the chicken has had some time to get crisp over on the stove, I do go ahead and put it on a paper towel lined plate to drain off some of that bacon grease. While I want the flavor, I do not want slimy chicken on the salad. That would be a little bit off-putting. So I find that using a paper towel to drain it just like you would bacon is really a great way to get it ready for the plate itself and allow it to properly cool down so that you're not burning yourself when you're putting something like that on. Now, as you can see, my little guys have been out to the garden. They pulled in a major cucumber haul and that is the reason that we continue to eat so many cucumbers every single day. I think the beauty of eating in season is that if you wait all winter for a cucumber, you're ready for them when they start to come in. And that's exactly what's going on around our house right now. As you can see, my husband just got home from work. I have everything cut up and ready to go, but for the dressing that I'm making to go on top. The recipe calls for a blue cheese, homemade blue cheese dressing, and they use mayo as a base. Now, what I found was that, of course, not all of my kids were ready for the blue cheese dressing, so I made the dressing and left the blue cheese crumbles out on the side when I originally made this recipe years back. At this point, what I do is crumble up some feta. We don't use blue just because it's not something that I generally keep on hand, but feta will deliver a similar texture and also is a cheese that more of my kids like. Now, since we're no longer keeping store-bought mayo, I did go ahead and mix up this dressing just like I would a mayo. It has an egg, some oil, some salt, a little lemon juice, plus vinegar. And in addition, I'm adding some garlic and some lemon essential oil before using my immersion blender to get it all blended up. Now, as you can see here, Wonder Woman is always ready to help. She does occasionally like to crack the eggs, which is exactly what she's insisting on doing right now. Now, typically, I do just go ahead and crack this into the jar. But since my two-year-old is the one cracking the eggs, I gave her an extra bowl to crack into. Because while we do like interesting texture and ingredients in our salad, eggshell is not on the menu. Now, once she gets these eggs cracked... Her immediate request is that her hands get washed instantly. The great news for Wonder Woman is that her big brother is always ready to help her out. So her chair got pushed straight down to the sink to get her hands washed up. Now, any two-year-old or especially my two-year-olds have always really loved the water. So I can't really explain what she was thinking with her next move here. But she really likes to have fun, and at this point, she just took matters into her own hands and decided to wash her hair. I don't know. But anyway, she was having a good time. So we got the dressing all ready to go. All the ingredients are in the jar. The oil had separated up to the top, which is exactly what you want before you start to blend it up. Otherwise, it will not emulsify. Now with this dressing, typically you would thin it down to a portable consistency if you're using a store-bought mayo, but since I'm making my own, I just added a little extra oil into the mix and managed to get the consistency that I was looking for to pour it straight out of the jar without having to go back at the end and thin it down like the recipe actually calls for. A final taste, of course, to make sure it's what we were looking for, and it really was awesome. So it's time to get this all plated up. And as you can see, the number of toppings is pretty wide. So I'm taking the lettuce that we washed up at the beginning of the week and getting it back onto a plate. And I, I will add a caveat. We did eat all three of these chicken meals over a few days. We did not eat them three days in a row. We actually had a birthday in the middle of this week. And when we do birthdays at our house, we don't do birthday parties, but we allow our kids to pick the restaurant. We take everybody to a nice large town surrounding and let them pick fun things to do for the day. So we did not only eat chicken this week. We ate a lot of other various things as well. I'm just showing you the chicken recipes so that you can see exactly how easy it is to keep your kitchen cool and use some leftovers in a really, really delicious way. Back to the salad, onto the bed of lettuce is the delicious chicken, a ton of apples because that's always one of the first things that they request for seconds on, bacon, the cheese, the sunflower seeds that we toasted, 
as well as some croutons before pouring on the dressing. If you have any similar recipes that you really love making at home that keep your kitchen cool and your kids happy, make sure to drop them down below because I love trying out new suggestions all the time. And if you're interested in more cooking videos, make sure to check out this playlist.